In addition, how can Islam um, enfra enfranchise women when it continue enfranchise. enfranchise women when it continue to treat women as inferiors, um, especially like for example with poly polygamy? Um, what are your thoughts on? Well, I don't think, I mean, there's a, there's a difference between treating a woman as inferior and the whole, and, and the issue of polygamy. Um, obviously, uh, if women are treated as inferior, there's a problem. I mean, because they will not be listened to, they will not be consulted, they will be excluded from decision making, and that's, that's wrong. It's a problem. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he consulted with women, not just with, um, with his relatives, but there were other women who he would, senior women in the community whose advice he would get. Um, uh, so women have a place in the community and they shouldn't be looked at as inferior to men in, in any case. That needs to be corrected if that happens. Um, but polygamy is a, is a different issue. You know, even when polygamy was something that was non-controversial in society, um, and, and polygamy uh, was was legal in Judaism. It was lawful in Christianity up to a certain point. Um, it's still practiced in many societies throughout the world. But even when um, when polygamy was non-controversial in Muslim society, say in the medieval period, at the period of when Muslims had the strongest sort of political and economic systems, polygamy was always a a very uh, uh, a lesser choice among Muslims, so that a small minority of Muslim families ever were polygamous. Um, and and why is that? Because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Because it is, um, it's not the ideal situation if all other choices, you know, all other things being equal, most families would say it's not the ideal situation. It's too difficult to manage. Um, there's jealousy, there's, you know, all sorts of human dynamics. That's the reality of it. But it has been um, a, permitted as an option in uh, for the Muslims who need it and who decide by mutual consent. The Quran was revealed, uh, revealed verses on polygamy in a time of war, when there were many widows and when there were orphans. And so these were people, especially in a, in a society that's not well developed, that doesn't have a well developed economy and educational system, your security is really with your family. And uh, widows and orphans, of course, we know both in the Quran and in the Bible, there's a lot of talk about taking care of widows and orphans. Why is that? Because they're so vulnerable um, in, in any society, but especially in, an, in a kind of underdeveloped society. So polygamy allowed for that kind of stability. But, you know, what we find is that most people want a, a relationship that is a deep and intense love and friendship between a man and a woman. And that's why the vast majority of Muslims will choose that. Uh, but here and there, where there are situations of, of war, refugees, upheaval, that sometimes marriage is not necessarily about love and friendship and companionship. It's about finding some stability in a chaotic situation. And they'll continue, you know, to, um, to take that choice.